this is an open message to Michael Savage, Sean Hannity, Bill O'Reilly, uh, Rush Limbaugh, Mark Levin, Michael Medved, and all the other uh, quote unquote conservatives who who think they've poked all kinds of holes in Ron Paul's foreign policy and, and act like the, they completely understand it and, and uh, they've refuted it. I just want to say that uh, if you want to claim you've refuted an argument, first thing you have to do is, is to present the argument in its strongest form, showing A, that you understand it, and then B, from that strongest form, you present your arguments against it, and uh, then you can actually say you've refuted it or you've, you, anyway. So, what is Ron Paul's foreign policy and what are his arguments? Well, his arguments are, uh, he actually has three arguments for his foreign policy. He has a uh, constitutional argument, he has a moral argument, and he has a fiscal argument. The constitutional argument is A, that uh, only Congress can declare war and that once a war is declared by Congress then it should be fought to win uh, and then then it should uh, it, it, then our troops should come home as soon as it's is the clear objective defined by Congress is done then it then your troops come home um, the last declared war we had in this country was World War two 1941. Every war since then has been undeclared. Uh, World War II, we declared war, we went over there, we got the job done, and we came home. Uh, every war since then, Korea, Vietnam, Iraq, Afghanistan, Libya, everywhere else we've gone, it's been open-ended, and we have not got the job done and come home. <clears throat> That's a consequence of undeclared wars. Uh, the other thing, the other prong of the constitutional argument is that uh, the Constitution allows for military uh, defense of this country. That's the purpose of our, our, our military. And uh, is it really uh, is the reason that we have 50,000 troops in Germany really for the defense of this country? Uh, you have to justify uh, every uh, military base, every, every military action uh, by the Constitution and show that it's for the defense of this country. That's the constitutional argument. Uh, the second argument is a moral argument. Uh, and that has two prongs also. The moral argument uh, that he presents, uh, first prong is what he called the golden rule. And everybody's familiar with that, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Um, and he basically just says, think about what, it, what you would feel like or what we would feel like as a country if another country did to us what we're doing to them. And he gives an example of a Chinese occupation of the United States and how we would react to that. And uh, he he's often mischaracterized as justifying terrorism by, by this, but he's not justifying it. He's trying to explain it. And there's a big difference. He's not saying they're they are right to do the things that they do. He's not saying that. I just remember after 9/11, we were all searching for answers. Why did they? Why did they attack us? Why did they do this to us? And uh, everybody wanted to know. And so we did studies, and, and we we searched, and and we and we tried to figure it out. And the Department of Defense, the CIA, all these people found out that the reason they said they did it was because had a lot to do, I should say, with our 
uh, occupation over there of their lands and uh, that was the reason they gave and that and that's not to say that it's our fault that they did this because they are still responsible for what they do but that was the reason they gave and so uh, that's what he's trying to say and so people like Michael Savage will 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 say oh uh, Ron Paul said that the the Gaza Strip is is like a concentration camp and that shows that he's crazy well no uh, think about the Gaza Strip and uh, and how it how it's surrounded by uh, uh, borders that that, that that fences and ch and out and uh, checkpoints and and they they're not allowed to go to get out and this is a small um, area I don't know just uh, for you Michael Savage think of uh, Brooklyn if Brooklyn was was uh, fenced in and you couldn't get out without going through checkpoints uh it would be like a concentration camp and that's all he's saying he's not saying that uh that justifies uh them them uh, shooting rockets into israel he's not saying that he's saying that that that's their motivation and we need to understand that and uh the second prong of the moral argument is the uh Christian just war that you only go to war when it's justified and uh, um, that's pretty self-explanatory we have to and that goes that ties into the constitutional argument where you get a declaration of war you have to justify the war and you have to go to the people and the people have to or their representatives say yes yes we agree this is a just war and then you go in and you fight it you fight it to win it and you come home and his third argument is a fiscal argument and basically that is we're broke we've spent four trillion on wars uh, in, in Iraq and Afghanistan in the last 10 years that have not been funded they are the, they're they were fought on borrowed money they are being fought on borrowed money and our our debt is is 16 trillion dollars and or will be and there's no end in sight and so that's his fiscal argument we just can't afford it we have to justify fis fiscally every outpost every base every war and uh if we don't do that we're ripping off ripping off the american people and and so those are his foreign policy positions and if you actually say uh, say it that way and then present your arguments against it then then you will have gone a long way towards refuting them if you present some caricature like oh he he wants Iran to have a bomb he doesn't care or he doesn't care about Israel or all these other things that are presented those are not actually his foreign policy views so you're just presenting a straw man argument and then knocking it down and then patting yourself on the back um, and that's not honest and if you want to be uh, an honest conservative then you at least owe it to the man to um, give him the benefit of the doubt and uh, that's another thing that that really bothers me is that he's often called insane or crazy or kooky or loony and when you say that about him you're saying that about me and you're saying about that about everyone who follows him because we have uh, we have adopted his views and we see the the, uh, the wisdom in them and so you're insulting a lot of us when you say that and you should think about that too all right